What's up creators, I hope you're doing well, I'm Tony Fuentes, welcome back to my channel and if we're just meeting, in this channel I do tutorials for video and photo editing so if you're interested in this topic, stick around, see what it's all about and maybe you can subscribe at the end by hitting the button down here. Okay, today we're returning to the Airlag series, the photo Airlag series with a profile from Laura Daniela Prado. Now, Laura Daniela Prado is a travel photographer but also a street photographer, so her style is very beautiful, she just goes around in her travels, taking, taking around some beautiful photos uh, of the scenario around her it's nothing preset, no photo sessions, no uh, portrait sessions or anything like that. Just something very casual and that's why her style is very beautiful. So we're going to jump into Instagram, break down her style, analyze it, see how she takes her photos and what she does in post edition. Then we're going to jump into Lightroom, create a preset out of her style and then apply it to different scenarios to see how it performs. Now the purpose of these tutorials is for us to use these profiles of famous creators as an exercise into dominating Lightroom and achieving better knowledge on how to use every slider within the program so it's not a purpose of just stealing the style or anything like that okay having said that let's jump into instagram break down her style okay so this is laura daniela's prado's profile on instagram laura prado if you want to go and support her now if her name seems familiar or her face it's because you may know her through monaris she's monaris's wife and they travel together and take lots of photographs now this is her personal account so she basically takes all the photos from her travels and just edits them and posts them here now first of all, which camera does she use to take her photographs? Now in her profile I didn't find any reminiscence from uh, what gear she uses but then over here in Monaris' profile in this story we can see that here we have uh, Monaris' camera, she's a Sony ambassador and over here we have Laura's camera which is a Leica Q2 and she also shoots with some analog cameras. Now the Leica Q2 is a very interesting camera, well uh, not interesting, very expensive camera. Here we can see in BNH Photo $5,700 for this little camera which doesn't even have interchangeable lens. Now this camera is the price even pricier, even more expensive than the Sony A1 or the Canon R3, higher than the flagship cameras from these big companies and just basically because it's a Leica. It, it, you can't even change the lens, it's a 28mm lens and you can't even change it to another lens. So, uh, very interesting choice. I wouldn't buy a Leica for that reason. It's just too expensive for what it does. It does have a 50 megapixel sensor, but other than that, it doesn't even have a flip screen. It's not very comfortable in hand. The ergonomics aren't the best. And then the video capabilities are just, well, they're not very good. My A6500, which is, which is one quarter or less than the price of this can shoot better video. Okay, so that's about the gear. She shoots with the Leica Q2 and some analog cameras. Now, let's talk about her style. Okay, so first of all, looking at her style, just scrolling down, general aspect, she shoots everything in a very sunny day in her travels. Nothing of night photography, nothing of uh, moody photography. It's just a very sunny day that works perfectly with harsh sunlight. Now, let's click on the first image over here. And the first thing that I can notice is the low contrast. We can see that this image is very flat. What do I mean by that? That the whites and the highlights are brought down, so we have a lot of information in the brightest parts of our image, and also in the shadows. Dark parts of our image contain a lot of information. She's doing this in the tone curve by pulling up the shadows and pulling down the highlights and also in the basic corrections. Now, normally when we shoot in a photograph in a very sunny day, we need to decide what we expose. So either we expose the subject correctly and the background on the sky is overblown, or we expose to the background and the subject is or underexposed. So in here we can see that the post edition allows her to really have a better dynamic range in her image by having a lot of information in highlights and also in the shadows. So that's in the basic corrections and the tone curve. Next up, one thing that's very apparent is the complete desaturation of the sky. Well, not complete. We can see a bit of blue, but it's very desaturated. And also basically all the colors are quite desaturated uh, and muted. Over here we can see these balloons, the Spider-Man, the oranges, uh, well, there this should be red, but it's more towards the orange side. That's done in camera calibration. Also, the blue on the jacket on the seller over here is turning towards a bit of the aqua. So those are little things that we have to remember. We can do these in camera calibration. Okay, before we jump into another image, we can see that the blacks are very faded out. They're basically gray. This is the black on Instagram. And then we can see the black in the shirt of the boy over here, which is quite gray. So we need to fade out the blacks in the tone curve. Okay, another image, this one is in the Sahara. Once again, we can see this high dynamic range with a very flat image of very flat exposure. Uh, this is in the desert at midday by the shadows, uh, I can judge it. And we should see a lot of white. We should see um, the sun beaming down on the sand, which is white and very white and very high exposed image. And in this case, this image is quite flat actually. Even the tunic of 
the guide over here is basically brought down so we have a lot of information in it and we have a lot of information in the sky but also over here we can see in the shadows once again blacks are very faded out now the next image in that same set we can see that desaturation in the sky in the reds turn towards the oranges and then that desaturation in the blues and the aquas as well now if we scroll down to this image this one is very cinematic particularly because it's a landscape shot it's almost uh, a screenshot from a movie or something like that where the subject is just explaining something of the background this one is in rome and it's very beautiful once again desaturated skies more towards the dark blues rather than the aqua so that's the thing we have to remember and then we have all that brick color turned towards the oranges so we have we so that's done in camera calibration as well as the greens being a bit desaturated now one thing that's very apparent in this image and in basically all of them is that warmish tone that it has now it's more of a slight brown color towards the highlights and towards the shadows of the image nothing too exaggerated like daniela pardo's profile that we broke down a couple of weeks ago i'll link it up here in the cards which is a moody brown this was this one is a very slight and subtle brown added to the highlights and into the shadows. so here you can see the hat of the subject over here that has a very warmish tone to it and also the shadows have a very warmish tone to them so we're going to do that in color grading part or the split toning now one thing that she does very well is make her style or make her photographs look timeless with that color grading that desaturated and those brownish tones every single image looks like if it could be shot yesterday or 30 years ago or 50 so we can look at these images and there's no apparent reason to suggest us that this image was shot in the 21st century it could be shot in the century before this and it's very impactful the quality of the image that it has but how she transforms the image to look like it's timeless or very old once again this image could be very old or it could be a contemporary image keep scrolling down and this story repeats itself again this image could be memories from someone in the 70s or it could be uh, a memories from the week before this uh, before today so it's a very beautiful style the way she makes it timeless and the way the warmish tones interact with the other desaturated tones and the way everything is very flat with high dynamic range so this style is very beautiful another thing that we have to keep in mind as well uh, while we're looking at this photo is the grain it's a very nice and subtle film grain and uh, just giving it a bit of texture so i think i have everything i need once again it's a very desaturated style very not very contrast that's why we see a lack of contrast between the exposed and the underexposed parts of the image so it's a very nice style and it's very nice because we can apply it to different scenarios whether it be with harsh sunlight or it be just in a normal day so in theory what i want to do in Lightroom to achieve this style is first of all achieve more dynamic range in the image by bringing down the highlights and the white and bringing up the shadows and the blacks to have a flatter image now we want faded out blacks i want some desaturation in the image and then in camera calibration we want to tamper a bit with the tones to make them a bit more vintage and finally in the color grading part we want to add that brownish tint into the shadows and also into the highlights now before we jump into Lightroom I just want to remind you that this preset is going to be added into the edit like packs the desktop and the mobile packs uh, I'll link up here in the cards in case you want to check it out in those packs we have every preset that we created throughout this series there are more than 40 presets including Peter McKinnon, Alan Palander, Clavero, Monaris, Luis Glass all the profiles that we've broken down in the series are in those packs so that's a way you can support me and just uh, have those presets at your disposal okay having said that let's jump into Lightroom and edit some photos okay so here we have some photos uh, all of them are shot in a very sunny day some of them are from my latest trip to LA some of them are from Japan but in this case well the street photography once again there's nothing uh, too complicated about these there's not a model that I told how to pose or anything like that just random people random shots in the street so that's what the style is made for so let's start off by editing this one where we have some subjects in them okay so first of all what we want to do is create a more flat image with a desaturated and that faded look then we're gonna jump into the color grading part now remember that white balancing exposure and contrast I like to leave them just uh, by default so those are the values that we're gonna alter in different photos to apply the preset and make it work with other type of photography so first of all let's bring down the highlights to achieve a bit more dynamic range in the brightest parts of our image like in these ones so I'm gonna bring it down to the negatives and immediately we can see how more information appears in the dark parts of the image then we're gonna do the same thing with the white now you should know by now that whites and highlights have difference white controls 
brightest parts of your image, then highlights a bit lower, then shadows, and finally the blacks control the darkest parts of the image. So you need to understand the differences between whites and highlights and shadows and blacks. Okay, whites, we're gonna pull them down as well. And now we can see we have a lot more information in the highlighted parts of our image. Next up, we're gonna pull up the shadows so we have a lot more information in the shadows. And a flatter image, not too much. And also with the blacks, not too much. Just gonna put it up, something like that. Immediately we can see that the image is a lot more flat and a lot better exposed. Okay, next up, in the texture and clarity, we don't want to add any texture or clarity. Basically adding these two will create an over sharpening, uh, digital over sharpening in our image and over contrasting. So we can see we pull the clarity up, a lot more contrast has appeared in small parts of the image. Texture will add too much sharpening to our image, which isn't something that we want. We want to replicate a film look style, so what we want to do is go to the negatives. I'm just going to pull down to minus 12 and the minus 14 the clarity. Next, vibrance and saturation. Well, basically, uh, vibrance and saturation are quite different. Saturation affects every single color at the same way, while vibrance is a bit more selective with the most important colors of our image and it doesn't hinder them too much. So in this case, I'm just gonna pull down the vibrance so we don't affect the primary colors on our image. Just pull it down so we have a bit desaturation on our image but not affecting the primary colors, which is the brick and the blues. Okay, now the tone curve. Now in the tone curve, we're gonna apply that faded out look, but also make it a bit more flat. Now if you want an in-depth tutorial on the tone curve, I already made it, I'll link it up here in the cards in case you wanna check it out, where I go into detail into how to use the tone curve and every single channel that it has. Okay, so we're gonna create a point in the shadows and also a point in the highlights, and we're gonna create an inverted S-curve. We don't want it to be like this, which is a contrasty S-curve over here. What we want to do is go all the way to the opposite. We're gonna bring down the highlights under the diagonal over here and bring up the shadows just over the diagonal barely just like that to create a flatter image. Then we're going to pull the lowest point over here which is controlling the blacks just pull it up to fade those blacks out. Okay just like that now we can see those faded out blacks we don't have any pure blacks on our image and the image is looking basically very flat. Now we're getting to the style, next up the color grading part. We're gonna skip HSL secondary for the time being and add that warmish tone into the shadows and into the highlights in the color grading. Now in here what we want to do is just add a warmish tone into the shadows with a bit of saturation. Now if you want an in-depth tutorial about color grading, I already made it, I'll link it up here in the cards in case you want to check it out. Now I'm just gonna show you what I would do to achieve that brownish to look in her images. Now we don't have any brown colors in the color wheel. What we want to add is a bit of red and a bit of orange. Now for the shadows, I'm just gonna go around with the color wheel, something like that. 43, you can introduce the hue over here or, and the saturation or just move the points over here. Now I'm just gonna add a bit of saturation, not too much, we don't wanna go to the extreme. We just wanna add a subtle brownish tint. So here we have 7% and here in the shadows, we can observe how if we click it on and off, the shadows are a bit blue. Now they're a bit more orangey or brownish. That's what we're looking for. Next up, I'm just gonna skip the midtones because this will affect a lot of the skin and we're gonna affect more so the highlights. Now in the highlights, we also want to add a warmish tint to it, but a bit more of a reddish so it combines with the orange that we already added. Okay, I went with the hue of 39, and this time I'm gonna add a bit more saturation, maybe to the 15, just like that. And now we can see over here, now in the brightest parts of the image, how we have that warmish tint added, and now it's looking very brown and just what we were looking for. We can click color grading on and off, here we have the image, it's a lot more blue, and now everything is a bit warm with that brownish, uh, slight brownish tint to everything. That's what we were looking for. Now we're gonna go all the way down to detail, and in detail we don't want to add any post sharpening. As you can see, by default Lightroom adds a 40%, just gonna leave it at zero, we don't want anything like that. And then we're gonna go all the way down to effects and add that grain. Now for the grain, I'm just gonna go with a slight quantity, something around uh, the 20% over here and the side is going to make it a bit bigger so it's a bit more dominant and finally just add a bit of roughness to the image to give it a bit more texture something like that now it's not very apparent but just adds a nice film look to our image finally we're going to go all the way down to camera calibration and here we can tamper with the overall colors uh, that compose every single pixel of the image so first of all what we want to achieve is that orangey tone in the bricks and in the reds, in the tiles over here, just gonna add a bit more 
towards the bricks of the red. Well, basically we're altering every single color by moving these sliders, but more so in the red primary we're altering the reds and the direct opposite, which are the greens. So I'm just gonna add a bit of red primary towards the positives, just to alter the colors. We don't wanna go to the extreme uh, and we don't wanna go towards the purples, just add it enough so the bricks are a bit more dominant, a bit more orangey, and just add a bit of saturation ever so slightly like that. Next up, the green primary. Now in the green primary, we're, we're altering the greens. Uh, basically, we're altering primarily the greens, but also the direct opposite in the color wheel, which are the magentas. So if we move the greens to one side, we can see how it alters the reds in particular because they're composed of magentas. Uh, basically, we're altering the greens, but also the direct opposite in the greater manner. So I'm just gonna add a bit more saturation to make those oranges and reddish pop just a bit more, not too much, just gonna add a bit, around the 16% I went with. And immediately we can see how everything is, everything of the orange side or the warmish tones are really popping a lot more. And finally, what we want to add is that blue primary. So we create that desaturation in the sky and also more towards the dark blues, not towards the aquas. If we go to the negatives, you can see that the sky is now basically a teal color, not what we're looking for. We want to go to the opposite, not towards the purples, but just add it a bit so it's a bit more deep. And then the saturation, just gonna pull it down so we desaturate the blues and the sky in general. Okay, something like that. Now we can click this button on and off to see what calibration has done. And basically it's just fine tuning our editing. Here we have it activated, disactivated, just add a bit more punch and a bit more of those film look colors. Now the sky is a bit too saturated for my taste in this image. So I'm gonna go up to HSL and here in saturation, just gonna select the blues and the aquas, just pull them down so they're not too dominant, not too much, just like that. And now they're basically uh, just ever so slightly desaturated, but they're still present. Now, now the preset is finished. I'm not saying that I'm not gonna modify it further along, but let's see how it performs on different scenarios. First of all, we're gonna save it. We're gonna go to the left panel over here, hit the plus sign and create preset, and then we're gonna name it. And remember the white balancing, exposure and contrast, we're not gonna use them. These ones are gonna be unmarked, so we can tamper with them depending on the scenario of the image. Also transform and lens corrections, we don't want to have them. Okay, so we're gonna go to other images to see how it performs. Okay, so here we have this image in Japan and as I was telling you before, I needed to decide what to expose correctly. So in this case, I exposed correctly the subject, which is this tower over here, but the background is completely overblown. So we're gonna apply the preset to see how it performs. And as you can see, I've already added it into the Editac preset pack. I'm just gonna select it, which is down here, Laura Prado. Just gonna apply it and immediately we can see how the whites are basically dimmed down so we don't have though so much overexposure and the contrast is lost in greater sense. Now the blacks, they were not there, they're basically raised, that was what we were looking for. And then we have that brick-like color in every part of the image. The greens are desaturated, just what we wanted. Not too much, so there's, it's not unreal, but it does have a very nice film look to it. Now we can see the sky turning towards the darkish blues, and also it's a bit desaturated. So it's looking quite nice in this image. Okay, now we have this image. This is just a random shot of this guy in the Getty Museum. So I'm just gonna apply the preset once again. This is Monalisa's preset uh, over here, Laura Prados. And as we can see, it's looking quite nice, actually. Now, in this case, I would go ahead and use masking tools to make the subject really pop or to fine tune this editing. So I've already done a video about the advanced editing tools and the masking tools within Lightroom. I'll link it up here in the cards in case you want to check it out and really nail down the advanced settings within Lightroom. Okay, another image in LA, this is City Hall. Let's gonna apply the preset once again, see how it performs. In this case, I would add a bit more exposure to this image but it's looking actually very nice. Maybe in this case, the blues are a bit too rich, so I would desaturate them a bit more, just a bit more, and maybe add a bit of luminance to them. Something like that. And now this image is looking very beautiful with that warmish or brownish tint in the highlights and also in the shadows, which is what we were looking for. Another random image, this one is of a bus in LA. Let's see what it does to the greens and to the reds. Uh, very nice colors over here. Now we can see that it's looking very vintage. Uh, those reds are desaturated, more towards the oranges, greens also desaturated, not too harsh, and the sky is a bit uh, desaturated. Now I just would add a bit more exposure to this image to make it really pop. Now it's looking quite nice, very beautiful style that we've created. Portrait of a skater over here in Venice Beach. Let's apply the preset. And it's looking nice actually. I'm just gonna add a bit more exposure. And the style is very nice, looking 
beautiful we have those faded out blacks we have that warmish tone in the highlights warmish tone in the shadows and overall the image is looking very brownish very beautiful very film look and finally we have this one in venice beach and as we can see it's very distorted so i'm just going to go all the way down to transformation and select auto now this is the venice beach sun and let's apply the preset and there we have it it's looking quite nice just add a bit more exposure to this image and perfect i think it would fit beautifully in Laura Prado's profile and I'm not saying that my photos are very great or anything like that but the style I think we really nailed it down. So in essence what we did was create a faded out look, a very desaturated look with a lot of information in the highlights, in the shadows, desaturated and also just tampering a bit with the colors to make it match that brownish tint that she has in her images. So that's basically it guys. I hope you liked the video and achieved some knowledge out of it. Remember that this preset is going to be added into the AI preset packs linked up down below and up here in the cards in case you want to support me if you can't just give it a like and comment down below any style that you want me to break down or analyze i'm tony fuentes subscribe all of those things cheers to all of you see you in the next one